You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Just when we thought that it absolutely was not possible, guys, seven years in the making, and DC has finally, finally hit it out of the park. Guys, welcome back to <laughs> Systematic Geekology. I am one of your priests to the geeks, one of your hosts. I am Joe, and I am joined by the one and only Pastor Will for today's festivities. How are we doing? Hello, hello. I have a little bit of a head cold, so if I sound a little deeper or a little coarser, that is why. But I, I sound worse than I feel. I feel fine, just a little bit of a head cold for hanging around a bunch of people and concerts and things over the last couple of weeks. But uh, looking forward to talking about this movie with you. You sent out a message to the group saying, guys, I saw this movie. It was awesome. I have to talk about it. And I was like, all right. I was not planning on seeing it, but now I went and saw it. And <laughs> uh, I'm sitting here talking with Joe about it. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, for all of you eagle-eyed uh, wrestling fans, um, out there yes that was that was in fact a reference to the one and only Dwayne the Rock Johnson and uh man this is <laughs> this is really this really has been like 7 years or something like that in the making right. he's been attached to this character for so long and this thing and he even said before i think if if memory serves me correctly it was before the last uh fast and the furious movie that he was in with the whole crew came out that he was first attached to this. And so he, he very openly stated like, look, I've got like seven years worth of stuff already on my plate with various movies that we're shooting and all of that. But afterwards we're doing this. And so seven mm -hmm. years later we did the thing. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I I'm a little, I'm a little jaded right now, as far as going out to the theater to go see comic book movies. You know, all, all Disney Plus is is a thing and, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I figure if I'm going to be the consummate DC guy, then I it's it's kind of my job as a fan to go out and and support <laughs> what's happening with my with, with my my money. And so I went and I just I was I was flabbergasted in in the best possible way. At, at what I experienced, but before I get to unpacking and and just gushing over, I can't I cannot hold back that I am going to gush over this movie. <laughs> I want to get as as one of the Marvel voices for the team. What did you think of this movie? Okay, let's get into it. Yeah, I um, it was on my radar, and I do think um, I am. Yeah, I grew up on Marvel Comics. I'm a big MCU guy. Love X-Men. That, that's just kind of my wheelhouse in terms of my breadth and depth of knowledge when it comes to comic books and superhero movies. Um, but I do like DC as well. I collect a lot of DC books. Uh, I grew up on Super Friends cartoons. Um, I like soups. I like Batman. Uh, those kind of things. And, and I did know the hype and kind of the Rock's uh, attachment to Black Adam. Um, way back when and kind of build up to that. And I do think COVID, um, COVID slowed down, slowed down this movie some and put a lot of breaks on a lot of things in, in kind of the different phases in the MCU and, and the DC cinematic universe. So uh, this has been a long time coming. And, and to be honest, like in the midst of like choosing where to go and spend my money and what I'm going to watch on TV, there's a lot of content out there. I was going to kind of let Black Adam um, do its thing and let the critics hammer it out and fight it out over Twitter and let, let people do stuff. And I was going to wait for it to get to HBO Max and then I would sit and, and watch it. But yeah, yep. Joe was like, guys, I saw this movie. I want to see it. I was like, all right. Um, my kids are out of the house. I said, I told my wife, I said, you want to go see this movie with me? And, and surprisingly, she said, sure, I like The Rock. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I bet you do. Um, I, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure his his uh, his arms and and abs have nothing to do with let's let's go to this movie. So I was like, all right, all right cool. So we made it a point and went to see a movie, and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't know if I loved it as much as as Joe or or as gushing all about it, but I went in knowing that there was a big kind of critic uh, discrepancy between like 
the the official critics of who they are and right. the fans. The fans really like it, and the critics are kind of like poo pooing it or whatever. So I went in no expectations. I'm just going to have fun with this movie, and it seems like that's the kind of approach you need to take to these movies most of the time. Let's go in, have fun, and then kind of pick it out apart and look at the critical eye. For me, I I saw this movie and and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. When it comes to like what it added to like the superhero um, cinematic experience, did it add anything new? I, I'm not sure. And that's why I want to get Joe's hot take on that because I know Joe's been pretty critical of like the MCU formula or just kind of, you know, weary of it or, or just fatigued by it. And I, and I totally get it. Um, for me, when I saw this movie, there are parts and beats that I was like, oh, I, I think I've seen this before. Um, and I and there's some places where I think I've I've seen it done better before, but in terms of seeing Black Adam and The Rock, uh, this hero or anti-hero or, or whatever how you want to classify it, um, do Superman things without pulling any punches was so rad. Like that power set of like I'm just not going to pull any punches. I'm going to do what I need to be done. And this I was like I am totally in on this and um even though there's parts of this movie that i I feel like i've I've seen before and i get the critical review of like hey you know um it's just the same old superhero stuff i it has a different twist and nuance to it and adds some i think helpful um cinematic uh connective tissues for the dc universe moving forward that they were able to connect some things in this movie with its heroes and its own continuity um, that I was I was excited about, and and to see those kind of connected, that's what I've been kind of longing to see in the DC universe. Um, I, w- I was happy with that. Was and and you know I I do at times get um, kind of crash and battle and explosion fatigue with some of these movies. Um, and and there was a part in this movie when I thought it was over, and then it wasn't. We went right back to it again. I was like wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, we're going to do this all over again. And I think that's how I felt with um, Doctor Strange, um, Multiverse of Madness, that there was just like, by the end, I was just so worn out. I was like, we're going to do the big battle again. So I think the movie, I did feel that towards the end. But all in all, I really liked it. And this particular hero, anti-hero, is he a hero, is he not? Again, answering that question, what makes a hero? It added an added layer in depth to that question, which I think we've talked about a lot on this particular podcast and other areas in our kind of geeky lives. What makes a hero? What doesn't make a hero? Um, Added, added to that question. So that's my long winded um, take from the get go. Uh, Joe, what you think? What are you going to add? All right. (laughs) So I want to start off by saying, guys, I I want to, I want to take the moment to, to, acknowledge when a fan when when a very vocal fan of of one particular type of movie reviews honestly a different type of the same movie well that was that was fair that was a very fair and impartial though i have responses to some of what you said i mm-hmm. i i really think that that's that that's well done Um, honestly, you know, I think as, as far as the mechanics of a superhero movie, no, it didn't necessarily add anything overly new. I will argue that other than like movies like Brightburn or shows like, um, I don't, that the, the bad, bad guys, bad, good, good guys. What I don't remember what it's actually called. It's the superheroes, but what if they were bad? Oh, the boys, the boys. boys. There it is. There it is. Um, yeah, zero interest as you can tell, as you can tell from me to watch that, (laughs) but there you go. Um, other than that, you don't really see, like you said, somebody with the power set acting in that particular way. And don't worry guys, when we get to the point of actual spoilers, I'll make a comment so that way you guys who are listening to this who have not seen it um will will know when to when when the spoilers are going to come. But I would say that that from a mechanic standpoint if I had to point to a particular thing that might be different than than other examples, 
I would say that's probably it. Um, the biggest issue that I find when people talk about this movie is even low key when they're when they're comparing it to other superhero movies, it still gets compared to the MCU. And right. and yeah, I get it to an extent. They are the biggest dog in the yard. They are for a lot of people what the barometer is for a superhero movie, but let's take it out of the conversation for a second of the in comparison to superhero movies in general and then let's put it into the conversation of just the dceu and what they've been trying to build now i appreciate i've i've gone on record to say that i appreciate the artistic stylings of Zack snyder and the snyderverse i think that that yeah, caught a really that. bad rep i think mm -hmm. that honestly it was basically the antithesis to marvel in a lot of regards but came out before people really hit Marvel fatigue, I I will go on record to say that I think the Zack Snyder movies would do would have done better if they were released later, and and you know by virtue of just how different they were and all of that. But this was a step forward in a positive direction for the DCEU, and was something that added that added a layer of backstory and character building and all of that that didn't already exist in the DCEU. And yes, it did it did it follow some of the same steps that some of the early Marvel movies followed? Yes. But again, I don't think some of the same comparisons would happen if this movie came out 7 years ago. You know what I mean? I think what if it's in line with some of the more some of the the earlier uh, Marvel movies, I don't think that that same that same kind of criticism is gonna is gonna end up on it because people aren't aren't haven't been exposed to going so far down the field with crossovers and events and all of those kinds of things. Yeah, and I think it is interesting in terms of the history of like. The, the competition and the tension between DC and Marvel. DC had these characters for a long time before Marvel even became a thing in the 1940s and 50s and 60s. And so even though Marvel had its different twist on comics and made it more grounded or whatever, and the angst of Peter Parker and the realism of the family of Fantastic Four, they used some of the prototypes of what DC already had in terms of characters. Like Doctor Strange didn't come around until way after Doctor Fate. So you could watch this DC movie and you'd be like, oh, isn't Doctor Fate just Doctor Strange? They're copying Marvel. And you're like, well, Doctor Fate has been around a long time, way before Marvel. So even though DC beat it to the punch in the comic version of these characters and Marvel prototyped it and twisted it a little bit, Marvel beat DC to the punch when it came to putting these movies out and, mm -hmm. and telling their stories. And so now DC's playing catch up when it comes to the to the movies to tell their story and they're seeing what and and you know you have directors and executives and uh ceos going oh we see what's successful let's let's mirror that so we can make some money uh but they're still telling a story so i i i'm with you like you know the even though you can kind of go back and forth like didn't they just didn't they do adam smasher with with ant-man growing the, yeah but adam smasher's has been around just a society has been around a long time and so those kinds of things um but here what what are they doing in this particular movie to build the connective tissues and what they want to do move forward in the in the um dc movie universe and you know i think for a long time the dc cinematic universe didn't have like a leader or pastoral leadership looking over, you know, they didn't have a Kevin Feige, but now we have James Gunn who's just been hired. Um, and you have this movie, uh, this connecting some tissues and then you have the suicide squad and some of the HBO max things that can be tied in. Uh, Amanda Waller's in there. Um, I, I, I am, it, it let, it allowed me after this movie to go like, I want to see, I, which I haven't felt before. Um, I want to see what they do next. And yeah, we'll right. talk about the end credit scene and what that did. But the uh, after this movie, even though there are some things in the movie that I was like, huh, okay, I've seen it before. I'm not that impressed. But there are things I was like, wow, okay, that was cool. And then I left the movie going, all right, what's going to happen next? Let's see what happens. And get, that gets me excited. Yeah. Kind of like when I read comics. Like a re reason I read a comic is the last page, that, that cliffhanger 
is going to make me want to pick it up next month or next week in my local comic shop. And, and these movies are doing that for me too. And, and I was excited to leave Black Adam going, okay, cool. What's next? Yeah. And, and I would say one of the, one of the biggest things that this did for the DCEU is it made it feel expansive for the first time. This felt like a world that was bigger than the location in which we were seeing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yes, we saw thing, places like Themyscira, places like um, Atlantis, and we saw these different these different sections of the world, but it didn't. They all feel they they didn't feel connected as part of the same universe. It never felt like there were things going on in this universe outside of where the camera was at that particular time. This right. made it feel like there were things going on in different parts of the world. All at the same time, this may feel bigger in that re- in that regard. Um, but yeah, it's funny. We, my wife and I, had had almost exactly that conversation when uh, after the movie that she said that um, Pierce Brosnan uh, reminded her of uh, Bender Snatch Cumberbund, um, <laughs> and and I, I explained to her that you know that that Doctor Strange is a derivative of. Dr. Fate and so on and so forth. And that mm-hmm. you were seeing a lot of that because they were using characters that Marvel sourced to create their characters. Marvel just hit the big screen first. Um, yep. And so I want to, I want to shift gears into the, the, a little bit more of the specifics of the movie. So if you are sensitive to spoilers and you do not want to hear any spoilers, we are about to get into the actual thick of things as far as the movie itself. So that is your warning. If you are still here, let's go. Um, for my money, and some people might argue Superman takes this cake, but for my money, this is this is the first time that DC really was loyal with the backstory and characteristics of a character. Mm-hmm. I think that they had every, especially with The Rock, they had every opportunity to lighten up Black Adam, make him a little bit more kid-friendly and all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I understand that he developed a relationship with this kid, but it stayed true to the fact that Black Adam does not care about what happens to the rest of anywhere else. Do not step foot in conduct. Done. Like that's that that is his area. That's it's very much like for you Marvel fans, it's very much like Namor in that regard. Could not care less about the rest of the world. Do not step foot into his territory and everything's fine. Um that to me was so resident on on a couple of different levels. And there's gonna be two different, two, two specific positions that I look at this that, that I look at this movie through and that's part of why I will openly state this this there is an argument to be made I want to watch it watch it again before I definitively say this but there's absolutely an argument for this to have become my favorite superhero movie yeah okay um because I look at it through the lens of an avid DC fan but also through the lens of somebody who has been working in international ministry and international shepherding for the last couple of years. And I think with both of those worlds, when you talk about the actual character of Black Adam, Aces, I think they did the, you know, yes, they changed for, for, I, I, I hear you DC fans. Yes. They changed a little bit of his backstory with, his dad and, and, or with him being the dad rather with his kid and all of that kind of stuff. But they, uh, they, they took that, I, the, the idea pretty faithfully from the new 52 version, just changed a little bit, uh, a little bit of things here and there, which it's, it's the movies guys. They did all of, they, they did that and more with Marvel and they still managed to build a co a, a connective universe, you know? And they're getting ready to do that with Namor in, in Wakanda forever too. Like, yeah, they're going to change his backstory and the fans are going to flip out, but I'm going to wait to see the movie first before I make any judgment. And I'm really looking mm-hmm. forward to it. Um, yeah. And I do think it's interesting that like, 
when you look at these these villains and stories, like here is uh, an anti-hero or villain from the 1940s, from the Shazam, Captain Marvel family. And, and at that time, let's think about what's going on, World War II. You got the East versus West. A lot of the villains are like stereotypical um, Asians, darker skinned Middle Eastern folk. And and yeah, there there needs to be a course correction and not like pull in these stereotypes. And, but they're able to be remain faithful to his origin, but all know like pit him as like, oh, he's the darker brown guy from the Middle East. So therefore he's a villain kind of thing. Um, let, let's make it more nuanced in terms of uh, uh, his country, oppression, um, the West ignoring what's going on in the East. Th- those tissues and those um, kind of reflections in this movie, I think, helps kind of illustrate and again hold up that mirror to think about what's going on in the present world, but doesn't bring you so far into it that it takes you out of the story itself of who um, Black Adam is. They don't even name him Black Adam to the very end. Right. They, they use other names. Um, and I and I thought that was really well done. I went in like, how are they going to do this? Um, and, and they went into like, you know, Just Society shows up and like, oh, you're you're a danger. You got Hawkman, who's a person of color um, in this particular um DCU um, as well, talking about law and order, and they have that kind of conversation. Where were you before? Why are you just now showing up now? Um, who you have a right to tell us in our own country when we have other oppressors here and you haven't done anything about it? Although I'm totally interested in those kind of questions, and, and I'm on the edge of my seat to see how they're going to wrestle with them and see if they're going to shed anything new on those. And I, um, I, it didn't really shed anything new, but it definitely set it up. Uh, to have a larger conversation with a larger DCU world connective universe, especially when you potentially going to bring in the Justice League to be a part of of those relationships or teams. Yeah, you know, one of my favorite things about this is they just they hit the gas right when they when they started telling his story, they plugged him into the modern world. And this modern world has heroes in it. And yes, I understand that a big um, a big complaint that I have heard is that they didn't stop to give a backstory about the Justice Society and all of that. But who knows how long how, how long this, you know, how in in world, how long it's been since the last time that we saw anybody and they're very t- they're very specifically connected with like Amanda Waller and all of that and it it ties it into already established p- pieces of the universe but but still just hits the gas and allows for the the story to unfold naturally you know do i wish that we had more Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate in other in other <laughs> uh, movies yeah because he was awesome because he was one of the highlights of the movie for me. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to get somewhere. You have to have these pieces and start telling a story. And, and, and like I it's said, black Adam story, right? It's not right. just a society story. I'm glad they're brought in, but it's black. Adam. I think if they would have gone more into justice society, I would have been taken out and like, why are we going down this road? I, I'm there for black Adam. And, and you set up these other pieces to be like, cool. We'll get that story later. Yeah. Yeah. Hawk, Hawkman story. Cool. Um, uh, Dr. Fate, who's going to be the next Dr. Fate, Amanda Waller, why is she controlling things? Cause we've seen another like suicide squad and peacemaker on HBO max. She's not necessarily a benevolent, uh, um, leader, uh, within this whole world. <laughs> um, so it's like, why is she calling the shots? Like those questions like, Oh, but that would be answered in a different time. Another movie, another video. I'm there for black Adam. And that's the story, like you said, moving forward. It kept drawing me in, drawing me, drawing me in with a couple of twists along the way that I honestly didn't see coming. Um, by the end, I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is one of my favorite characters in the DC universe now. Right, right. And one of the things I thought was interesting, if you notice, is if uh, when the the kid drops his bag, um, he ended or he he uh, drops comics out of it. And mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. DC Rebirth comics. Yeah. And so yeah. they canonized <laughs> DC comics in 
the universe, which I find yeah. absolutely fascinating. I, mm-hmm. I, I know that they I know that they started getting into that post uh Infinity War and all of that for Marvel, that there was like more of a, you know, products and and merchandise and all of that kind yeah, of stuff. fandom like, comic cons that kind of stuff yeah. musicals <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh i thought that was an interesting an interesting turn to take again made it feel made it feel like a bigger universe so so for me when when squaring the circle of an avid comic book fan an avid dc fan and all of that i thought that this was their best outing I thought this was probably their most coherent outing. Um, I, I like the other movies, but this to me read as the most complete superhero movie that they did. Yeah, um, I, I'm with you. I think I would my my main favorite one. I think in the DC year would be that first Wonder Woman movie. Um, you know, a lot of fans will go like Aquaman. Um, but that that movie, I don't know out of this because the mood I was in or not. There's parts that are really good and parts that kind of annoy me. Um, this isn't that far from that. I, I loved Man of Steel up until the, like the last 15 minutes or 30 minutes of of that movie. Uh, Cavill's Superman is fantastic, and I just wish the end was a little different or played out a little more. I, I love the tone of that movie. Um, but but yeah, I, I think it was there in terms of DCU and what they're trying to do, and and finally. Con- pulling the connective tissues together they yeah i'm on board this one this one did it for me i'm with you on that on that yeah um so so joe um honest question so someone who's been kind of like wearied or fatigued by kind of the marvel formula how do you see i think you've answered a little bit more um in this you've touched on it in terms of like the black adam character himself how would you say this is different from like say the marvel formula if, is it a different DC formula? Is it such a way that is connected to the larger world? Is it like the DC fan, DC comics? Love it that you're finally get to see some of your DC characters portrayed in a way that they are in the comics. But what I would say this movie is a little different than the MC formula. If it if it is, so to, this is this is a good entry point to be able to get a more comic book accurate tone out of your characters. I think the only other time that really they hit the comic book tone as dead on as they did with this was like you said, wonder woman, I think was the -hmm. the last time that they really hit it, but that, um, and, and and if you are fatigued from, you have to watch a million things to be able to be caught up and to know what the new stuff is. And everything Ah. comes with this giant weight of a preponderance of backstory and all Mm. of that kind of stuff. And I know most of the people that are listening to this are not in that position. I understand that most of the people in the community (laughs) are people that have been following it every step along the way, know every piece of it, all of that kind of stuff. But if that's not something that you dig and you need a break from this weight of backstory, then then tune in for a a superhero popcorn flick that that does its messages well. I'll get into that next. But in in the in comparison to what your average Marvel experience is, that it doesn't come with that same weight. Gotcha. So. I want to I want to make my next point by telling by telling a little bit of a story here. Uh, I'm not the most active on Twitter, but uh, it was brought to my attention a a specific uh, line of tweets that from a um, a critic that's in the space that for the last ten years has basically made it her mission to talk about how uh, superhero movies are devolved media um, that they're not good that they are the downfall of of cinema and all of this kind of stuff and very very outspoken against the superhero genre as a whole since the MCU um as far as before that I couldn't tell you whether or not she had those same similar kind of opinions about about the uh, about other um uh about pre MCU movies but when when she she makes this uh, this this tweet about um sitting in the theater and sitting in the credits the credits uh, of of this movie and with with tears in her eyes and she said it best the rock effectively and brilliantly led a brown and black cast in a movie that was about 
coming out of the colonization of white America. Mm. And as somebody who has been working with people from the Middle East and different parts of the world, there was a particular scene. Now, I've said this before, it for, but, but if you haven't, you know, every every episode is somebody's first. So if you're not aware, um, I am I am that when when Josh calls me Philly's Philly's favorite son, that should give you an idea. And and I am I'm very white. And so <laughs> for me, it's that it's that connection through helping people that opened my eyes to something that I don't think that before working with working with them, I would have seen. And there's this one scene that had me go against every fiber that that one that had me wanting to go against every fiber of my being. Again, every episode is somebody's first. I've gotten into this before, but I do not understand anybody who feels compelled to cheer in a movie theater. The per- nobody who made that movie is in the movie theater. Stop. Stop cheering. The, it's it's no like it's it's obnoxious in my opinion. The scene where everybody comes around the corner and it's everybody standing up for themselves and this is our country and it's oh bro even talking about it like mm. mm-hmm. if you if you sh- how do I want to say this if you shepherd or work with anybody from another country or any group from another country, you shouldn't want them to just take your formula and go and do your thing. And yeah, y'all can tell that I'm very specifically talking from the lens of somebody who has been doing ministry and understanding that not every organization that does this believes in what I'm saying. But this whole colonization thing is a very real piece. Mm -hmm. There are... There, there are many, many people that I have spoken to and worked with and all of that, that honestly, the first part of what they do when they get there is having to build, to break down these bad systems that somebody else came in and, and copy and pasted into, into this village or into this region. And the way they showed it in the natural, like there was just this natural tone to it. It wasn't, and guys, I'm going to, this is going to be spicy and I'm going to upset some people, but I do think that there were certain points where if we are going to hold hold true to this comparison against Marvel, both companies have tried to make, make messages to varying degrees of success, right? There have been movies that from both companies where they have very explicitly been sending a message and and reading subtext like the, the the subtext is there like it or not the subtext is there and again to varying degrees of uh, de- degrees of success and i would say that both companies have pretty categorically failed at this up until this point this was done in a way that flowed with the story with a believability of the the actors like there's something there's something nuanced to the fact that the rock has been has been tied to this character for quite some time and has invested interest in in this character and that that way of a, a thought that that you have to commit to if you are going to really tell this story and same thing with the actors, there's just this sense of believability there that you just, you felt this palpable tension of these people that were, that were held that, that have been systematically held down. And then you had this other group trying to be the, trying to be the big savior coming in to, to, to save the day because, because they felt like, they needed to you had this you had this moment where everything's building and everything's there's there's this there's this systemic oppression having happened to these people for for generations at this point with different people and all of that and then you have this other group coming in and saying this is what we think justice should look like this is what we think you should do this we are here to protect you and then to have them step back and say no 
we are going to protect ourselves and then have that coupled with the rock and him not caring about the greater world and only caring about this land like that that had me going against every fiber of my being of wanting to wanting to get up and cheer <laughs> uh, like i don't i don't like i don't nobody nobody that made the movie is there stop cheering don't clap it doesn't make you any know, it's, it's kind of like those charismatic churches. They want to get up and clap, you know, and Lutherans are like, nope, don't clap. This isn't for you. This isn't, we're not, we're not cheering the choir director. We're cheering God. So, uh, you know, where's that clap and cheering going towards? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, uh, Joe was getting ready to get charismatic in that movie theater and, and felt the upswelling of the Holy Spirit and go, yes, amen. Um, did. And, and I'm with you. That part was pretty powerful because at the beginning of this, we talked about what I what I liked about this movie is that it, it really had a di different depth or add a little bit more to the question, what is a hero? And throughout this movie, this kid, I'm, I'm asking, why is this kid around? Is he Shazam? Is he not? Is he going to become Black Adam? What's he doing there? What's he, you know, had this kind of like Terminator 2 vibes where he's got a skateboard, he's got his rock and roll, and he's talking to this robotic person about what uh, here. I'm like, am I watching Terminator 2? Uh, but by the end of the movie, they, they literally put a cape on him and... And with that cape on a skateboard, he turns the corner with the people. And and Black Adam understands that it's not – the Justice Society are coming in going, we're here to save you or protect you or save, even save you from yourself. Uh, Black Adam's like, no, how am I going to equip these people to fight for themselves? And he equips this kid. The kid looks up to him, but eventually he looks up to the kid and that transforms Black Adam's heart. This kid that literally has a cape on turn the corner of people that have no superpowers, they're willing to fight for their country. So again, you know, here's a pastor talking about, a, you know, saving or equipping or, you know, what does that look like in terms of ministering and shepherding, you know, healthy ways of doing that within my own denomination. You know, we have a missions, we go out and do missions and we set up. Uh, congregations and communities of faith and, and we feed people that are hungry. But but a big part of the turn over the last couple of decades is this word accompaniment. We're not there to save you from yourself or to teach you the right way from our, we're, we're going to accompany you and walk with you and learn from you just as much as you're going to learn from us. And we're going to listen to you for a whole year first, before we even begin to start talking about how we're going to you know, make your world a better place. We're going to accompany you first. And I, and I did like that part. Like you said, that was a, a very key moment when you're asking, what is a hero? What is a villain? Who's trying to save who? And then this kid, a child shall lead them with a red cape, turn the corner, um, leading the people to fight for themselves. Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, those are, those are powerful questions in and of themselves, but there's a the, just the willingness to be that blatant was phenomenal and there's this there's this moment where the 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 one of the main characters is talking to the justice society and she turns to them and after they say their piece and yada 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 they she stops and is like, who, who are you? Where have you been? Mm -hmm. Now you want to step in? And it's funny. I, I, we had, my wife and I were the only ones in our theater when we went to go see it. When she got done with that whole monologue, I'm like, mm -hmm. huh, like, like audibly made, made the noise because like, it's, it's exactly, it's, it, it, yes. Like this is, this is a very real struggle when when you work with people from other countries and and honestly you had a you had a debt on the money like anybody that 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 has walked with the buddy walk ministry or has heard me talk or anything like that knows that when i speak and i preach i have to break it up into two separate conversations one conversation is people from america other conversation is people from not from America because people from America struggle with things that people not from America don't struggle with. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? In these concepts yeah. and, and theological, this and this, that, and the other thing. And mm. I'm not going to lie. There are things that I've learned 
from the in in spades at master's level from people from from other parts of the world that if i turn around and go and try and preach here oh i'm seven different flavors of heretic i just am because it talks because it cuts through the nonsense into community and equipping people and allowing people to have the strength to be able to stand on their own and if you are, I'll say this again, and I'll say, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face because somebody with a platform said it, and I have to point to it, that if you are in international ministries, I, from the point of supporting a ministry on down through doing it, being boots on the ground yourself and anywhere in between, if you, you should want to in- equip them with the skills to be able to do it themselves. And that's a harder pill to swallow for those of us in America because then we turn around and we try and do this with people here. And it's a lot harder because, you know, I already feel like I know the best way of doing it. Or I feel like I already have this on handle and all of that kind of stuff. And it just, it's so, it's so pregnant with nuance. It's so like... I, as a, as a Christian and as somebody who is, is active in teaching other people, I point to this and I'm like, hello, is this thing on? Every Christian should go and see this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's an example of what this looks like to actually equip other people. Uh, it was just beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and like you said, other other movies go go down that route too. Whether it's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, we'll see what happens next week, or or when when Wakanda Forever comes out, and they're they're wrestling with the similar questions of 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 nations and territory and boundaries and your rules versus my rule, a precious resource that we want to exploit or not. I mean, that is all there, and and I think when people get defensive about these kinds of messages in the movies really what's happening is it is bumping up against their own ego or what they think is right rather than looking at it from the other person's perspective they they take it too personally so yeah um if if it makes you uncomfortable if it if it uh you get fear yourself getting defensive ask the question why not like maybe it's not the other person that's making you feel that maybe it's something within you that you're feeling that. So, so turn that question around and start doing some self discernment of, I feel myself starting to get defensive. I don't like this or I'm getting uncomfortable. All right. Why, why is that? Go deeper within yourself rather than turn around and, and, and try to tear it down. Um, so, so I, I, I think that movie, yeah, Black Adam does it well too. And we'll see what happens with Connor forever. But I, I um, th- I think those are conversations that need to be had. And then, yeah, these movies are fun. They're super powered. I got to see Black Adam, be like Superman and not pony punches like a power set, which is so fun. But it also ask those deeper questions too that that I think we should wrestle with as as um, as a society and um, and even as as people of faith and people in the church that have a great commission to go and preach and teach and make disciples. Well, often we interpret that as make that person like me rather than make that person let's be like Jesus together. You know, it's somebody else that we're trying to imitate, be like, not do you to be like me or my organization or my denomination. We're all following um, someone outside of ourselves together rather than ourselves. I hope that makes sense. Right. That's that's what leads me down. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the power of something like this, to be able to take different people down different specific roads that that are more attuned to where to where like everyday life for them. Like what, what is resonant with you? And that's, that's the power of a good story. It can help various people get to similar ideas, but within the, the context of what they would be looking at. Yeah. Not changing their subject a little bit. I'm curious. All right. What, before we talk about the end credit scene, uh, what's next for Black Adam in terms of the Shazam, Mar, not Captain Marvel, Marvel family. That's not Marvel comics, but you know, it goes way back to the beginning origins of these characters in the forties and fifties. But the Shazam family, 
you know, we have a Shazam. I saw the trailer for the new Shazam movie at the Black Adam movie, and I'm wondering, is is Black Adam going to show up? Are are the other, is that family going to have? What what's your thoughts? What's your hopes? Do you not care? What are um, some things that's going to set up to the larger Shazam verse? So, for those of you that don't know, um, the when you talk about um, Shazam, you have to have the conversation of Black Adam. Um, because if you, you know, if you saw the movie, you noticed he said the word, but if you don't know, um, they got their, their power from the same place. If you saw Shazam, they made a reference to Black Adam, um, uh, mm-hmm. at the, when, at the point where Billy was getting his powers. Um, I think end credits, I, I don't think that the rock will show up that it show up in that movie past it being an end credit, but I don't think you get away from, from, not telling that story i think there's going to be some kind of tie of of showing you know billy finds out that the powers of woke that that the original person who got them or the last person who got them you know he awoke or something there'll there'll be some kind of through the magic of it all connection piece that is going to put them in direct conflict with one another at first and then i think past that point you're you're going to see um kind of an uneasy acceptance of of one another just like you do in um in the comics by and large and i i think and i say that with confidence for a variety of reasons a um this this movie gave me hope because they they did stay so close to the character the caricature of of black adam but also james gunn has has shown himself to be the type of person that will tell more comic book accurate stories while still throwing in flair and this and that yeah um and 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 i think that this this is the first time that i've had hope for the dceu that we're building towards something and for a while that I was the type of person, I think I may have said this when we covered the Batman that I don't, whatever, make the rest of the movies like this, like the Batman, like isolated yeah. stories. We don't need, we don't need not every single comic book adaptation needs to be the Avengers, but this is the first one that I was like, okay, m- maybe there's, maybe there's still life here. You know, yeah. we need to yeah, somehow yeah. navigate our way around not having Ezra Miller as, as the flash and not giving that guy work ever again. <laughs> but you know, I I digress. I digress. Though I do find yeah. it hilarious that in that movie, if you notice, they showed a pretty good uh, uh, close up of Wonder Woman, a pretty good close up of Aquaman. Obviously, soups, but uh, <laughs> conspicuous by his facial absence, we only saw an outline of of the flash. Yeah, so we'll see what too. that looks like. But uh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> my. My hope, I do think that there's there's a story to be told. I wouldn't tell too much of that story. I don't necessarily... I think there's more than enough meat on the bone. And I, being of the particular vintage that I am, am a little bit biased by the, the era of Black Adam that I've been a fan because it's very much been a post-Shazam Black Adam, where it's been more about him as a standalone character while right. referencing the fact that he got the powers from the same place. I know in in generations gone by, there was a, a lot more direct of a connection between the two. But for me personally, I don't need to see it be super interconnected. Right. Right. I, I think um, I mean, Shazam, the original Captain Marvel, is it, such a cool hero for you know, the forties and fifties when it, it emerged. Cause you had this a kid who just says a magic word and becomes right. like Superman. And I'm like, what kid wouldn't want a magic word to turn them into a grown up superhero. And I, and that, and that still has legs. And, and I, and I do hope that they, at some point they merge and, and can tell a story, congruent story together in this, in the same movie with Shazam and black Adam. Cause I think, they're so connected in the DC world and, and in their history. I, I hope they can move to where they can have a movie together. Um, but but then the end credit scene, if you want to go there, um, Joe, uh, if we're ready for that, the the big thing, somebody said, another alluring part of this movie where they somebody leaned to me um, and said, uh, 
you know, you want to know the spoilers that, that happened at the end credit scene for this movie. I was like, ah, I might go see it. And it's like, oh, I won't tell you. I was like, oh, okay, that was intriguing. Not that I go see this movie just for the end credit scene, but that was luring. Um, I, the final scene, you have Amanda Waller telling Black Adam, you better stay in your place. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. Well, then emerge from, well, he says, uh, no man can keep me down, no human, you know, and then Nobody he goes, well, what if they, planet. nobody from this planet, he's like, well, I'm not talking about somebody from this planet. And then Superman, uh, Henry Cavill comes, emerges from the smoke and says, let's have a conversation. And then you're like, oh, junk, here we go. Uh, that's yeah. the battle that we want to see. If we just saw what Black Adam did earlier in this movie without pointy punches and Superman, who has, who is just as powerful, but tends to pull his punches, um, if they go at it. That that's the dream matchup. That's the the WWE. That's the wrestling in the ring main event yep. that we want to see happen. Um, my question is is why why is Soup's under Amanda Waller's direction? Like why would he ever listen to her, knowing some of her backstory, unless he just doesn't know what's going on with her? Um, so that's my question. I was like, well, Superman would never take orders from Amanda Waller. What are we talking about? What are you? Da, da, da? And I was like, okay. That's a story for another movie that has me intrigued. That makes you want to come back. So I don't know what your thoughts are. The final one. I mean, the fact they put a, a cape on this kid and here, the guy, the original cape uh, wearing dude shows up. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, um, so, so it, pretty historically in DC comics, there's been a, the characters have, uh, have been known to have an uneasy alliance with Amanda Waller um if it's if they're both heading in the same direction yeah meaning there are times where it is a, a matter of national security quote unquote um that you know he said he says it's been a while since anybody made made uh the earth this nervous or something like that yeah yeah and or made people this nervous and there's so I got the vibe that it was a matter of now you have this juggernaut. I know different Marvel character. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you, you you know so so, and he solidly, at, like held back the entire time. Like at any point in time, he could have done in any one of those those characters. And on the the Justice Society, and it, it's it is giving him that weight that he deserves because the big three. I understand that the that the Trinity is Soup's Wonder Woman and Batman, but the big three strongest are in 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 the current landscape are Soup's Shazam and Black Adam. Yep, and in my opinion. I don't think you need the typical Trinity to build this world off of. Don't get me wrong. Give Gal Gadot, as long as she'll take it, give her a job. She's Wonder Woman. Like, I think she did. <laughs> like, I'm not the biggest fan of Wonder Woman 88, but I do think that she, as Wonder Woman, aces. Phenomenal. As far as Batman, whatever. But Superman, Shazam, and Black Adam are three of the characters that you can build this entire world around. And, and, you know, I, I think oh, that if you put those, com I think the way that they put those two in direct conversation like that, where it was Superman, that, that like, we're not, we're not having an escalating power creep, like, okay, so he took out the, the, the justice society and now maybe he runs into conflict with Aquaman or runs into, and, and we see this gradual progression, like, no, no. He has proven to be a big enough of a potential threat that we're going to send in the biggest gun that we've got. Yeah, I, I like that. And, and there is like some history with Superman that one of his weaknesses isn't just like kryptonite, but it's, it's magic. Um, yes. Magic has has an effect on him and it's and is kind of a part of his weakness set. Um, and so the fact that like Shazam and Black Adam derive their powers from magic and wizards I think is an interesting idea. Yeah, they can go toe to toe, but, but what happens when Superman goes up against magic? Would they have time to explain that or not? But I, but I also like the idea that like if you're ever going to pull in like a world ending threat, like something like Brainiac 
and you need to get the big guns out. Like to see Superman, Shazam, Black Adam in a line, like hovering in the air, you know, floating as this big brainiac ship is, is entering our atmosphere. Dude, give me that any day. I'm I am yeah. there one hundred percent. They're just standing there with their capes flapping, like looking at each other like who's got this first, who's going in first, uh, or teaming yeah. up. Uh man, I'm there. Take my money. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's there's the the world is your oyster, especially now that Cavill's back. Like uh, I'm th- Yes, I'm a little bit biased because I thought this show was an absolute dumpster fire, but his talents were wasted on The Witcher. Like, I understand he's a big fan of the franchise, and I under I understand it was a passion project for him. I get it. That show sucked. Categorically, that show sucked. Never saw but, it. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But, like, it's very HBO in that it's shock for shock's value. But anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, the the world is your oyster now to tell all of these different stories. And it made me care about hearing the stories told. That's one of one of the biggest things that I think Marvel I'll say needs to be needs to remember what brought them to the dance. I'm not gonna sit here and weigh in about whether or not they're doing it still or whether or not they stopped or whatever. I'm not getting into that weeds. But I think that that the MCU, what they were able to do was was care about telling people that sto- they got people to care about stories that just given the source material they didn't care about if you just gave them the comics they did not care about the comics they didn't care about the source material if they're able to remember that that's what brought people to the dance is that you you told stories that people cared about then then you've got you've got a customer for life it's just this, it's the same exact idea as to why as to why a a 33 year old and a 50 year old are having conversations about convers or about comics that they read when they were kids. You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. uh, there's a reason for that. This is the first time where DC said where DC made me say, OK, I want to see what stories you're going to tell. You know what I mean? In a way, and like I said, I'm yeah, a fan I'm of the other you. stuff, but in a way that the other stuff just simply has not done for me yet. Gotcha. Boom. So, all right. Anything, uh, anything else you want to throw in there before we wrap it up? No, let's wrap it. I think, I think we hit it all. And um, yeah, all you Witcher fans out there, send your emails to uh, uh, Buddy Walk with Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. Joe I don't see at it, Buddy Walk with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good movie. I think it's worth it. You know, if you wanted to wait till like it's on HBO Max, cool. Um, but you, most likely you're yeah. listening to this and you've already seen it or you, you've already hit the highlights. But it's, you know, in the pantheon of, of superhero movies that there, there's going to be no short. It's going to keep happening. Nothing's going to stop it. I don't care what like critics or um, old movie directors who wish they could do more things like The Godfather um, would uh, um, want these movies to stop. They're not. Um, so if this is a part of your wheelhouse, then then go see it, enjoy it, and let it let it tell the story it wants to tell and let it um, ask the questions or help, help, let it help you answer some questions that everyone's wrestling with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I would say, I would say that this is a movie that benefits from some kind of connective tissue to it. The movie's great. I'll be the first one to admit, guys, I am exactly the audience. Like I said, uh-huh. I've been doing international ministry for the, la- for the last two years. I'm an avid DC fan. I'm a Christian. I literally tick all of the boxes for who, for who this movie plays for. I'll be <laughs> the first one to admit it. So yeah. I will not... I I will not for for any casual fans. I will not fault you for waiting until it gets on streaming. DC fans, support this movie. Let spe, talk talk with talk with spending your ad dollar or or your money your your money your your uh, luxury dollars because the this that's that's what sends the message. That's what tells the story about continuing to to really put an emphasis on the the cinematic world that DC can really do very well with independent of anything that Marvel's done not you know they can do the ne- they can be the next MC- MCU let's just be the next DCU let's just be the next 
DC universe. It's fine. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't need to be Marvel. So yep. yeah, that's, that's my recommendation. So, um, as we bring this in for a landing, any, uh, recommendations for our lovely listeners? Um, no, I, I will say, you know, Joe and I did a, um, an episode on Halloween, Halloween special. We talk about some horror movies and, and drive-ins and those kinds of things on Halloween night. Um, I, um, I went back and I found the, you know, I know Joe's a big Wes Craven fan. And so I, I, I deep cut uh, a Wes Craven, um, movie and i watched the original swamp thing and uh it is so weird and bad and yet good and yet uh, it, it i i remember seeing it as a kid on hbo and i couldn't tell you what i remember from it as a kid but like and go back and watching this and knowing it was west west craven and you have a dc character like swamp thing um man it was so bad it was so good uh and that i I enjoyed every second of it. Maybe just the mood of Halloween, but yeah, if you're if you're interested, yeah, it's not a kids' movie. Don't let your kids watch it. Uh, but um, I'd be curious what your hot takes are if you re- if you watch it. Let me know. Let's have a discussion yeah. about Wes Craven's Swamp Thing at some point in the future. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, my uh, my recommendation is if you uh, are going to go see Black Adam you are benefited by going to go see Shazam. If you haven't seen Shazam, watch watch uh, Shazam because yeah. it is, there are pretty direct ties, I would say, and it gives an idea of the powers and so on and so forth. So, so that's a wrap for, for now. And, and if you've listened to this whole thing and, and you've made it here to the end and, and we've left you, you know, wanting more, then you can head on over to systematicecology.org and uh, check out the back catalog of everything we've done. We've, we are rounding out the year of Lewis. We've been covering uh, TV shows and various things. So there's been a lot going on and, and you can go ahead and catch up there. Um, if you have listened to everything and you want to help us keep the lights on and want some of our uh, goodies that you can find over on Patreon, that is patreon.com slash systematic ecology. We've got all kinds of options, all kinds of tiers. And like I said, you help us continuing to do what we love to do. For now, that's it for us. I want you guys to remember one very important thing. We are all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.